be Dennis Nocton to address the House, please. Thank you, uh, Ken Corla. Taoiseach, uh, this week it has been agreed that the Chief Medical Officer, Dr Tony Houlihan, uh, is to be awarded the Freedom of the City of Dublin, an honour he rightly deserves. Together now with the now Tánaiste, the now Minister for Further and Higher Education, he was the steady hand we needed as we navigated our way through the pandemic, and the nation drew reassurance from his calm demeanour during his daily briefings. I believe it is time now, the time is now right, to also recognise the work of all frontline health workers. Many of our doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants place themselves at risk to go to work every day to keep us safe and to care for those who were seriously ill. Many of them made huge personal sacrifices during that, this time, including moving out of their homes and away from their families in some cases to keep them safe, while continuing to provide care not alone to those with COVID, but also others who needed uh, health care during uncertain times. Taoiseach, these health care workers have worked long hours in extremely difficult circumstances, and we must now stop and recognise the work that they have done on behalf of us all. These people have been selfless, and our country owes them a de great debt of gratitude. If it is not possible to re reward them with pay increases or some form of bonus system, then I believe at a very minimum we should offer them uh, additional paid leave. Time to spend with their families. Uh, they may have sacrificed fa precious family time with or indeed time out to recover from the physical and emotional tiredness uh, that they must undoubtedly be feeling. Taoiseach, would you not agree that now is the time for us to come together as a country and offer our healthcare workers more than a round of applause, but to acknowledge their work and their sacrifices? Taoiseach, please. Well, I... Thank you. Thank you, Deputy, um, in terms of your question and your presentation. And I would agree with you, uh, particularly in terms of the contribution that frontline health service staff and those in the background have made to the fight against COVID-19 and in effectively contributing to uh, the suppression um, uh, of the virus for now uh, and a very low level of community transmission. And I also share your uh, um, admiration for the work of uh, Tony Holland, the Chief Medical Officer, uh, and the calm leadership that he gave. Uh, and I think we all wish him uh, our very best uh, at this time, and also to the uh, outgoing Taoiseach and outgoing Minister for Health. And without question, uh, the healthcare workers, particularly in your acute hospital uh, setting in the early phase of COVID-19, uh, put themselves at risk uh, for the betterment of their fellow citizens. And we saw in the RT Investigates program uh, the intensity of that commitment, the intensity of that uh, contribution, and the huge emotional trauma that also went with it in terms of the additional duties that, that um, uh, nursing staff and doctors had to take upon themselves to communicate with families who, who could not be near their loved ones. Uh, I think what it also illustrates is the value of a very strong public service. Uh, and a good quality public service. And that's something we should never uh, underestimate in this country. Uh, in a time of crisis, it's the state fundamentally intervenes through the quality uh, and expertise of its public service. Uh, in the first instance, um, that is why the government has committed to honouring, notwithstanding the enormous financial difficulties that the state is, will be in, the pay agreements uh, that, that will fall due um, in the autumn. Uh, it's to recognise the contribution of the public service in general um, to, um, th 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 to helping the, the country come through COVID-19. And it also applies to others in terms of Angarda Shikona and other frontline workers, and indeed those in, in, in retail and so on who also came to the frontline 
to, to help people. So the government will examine your, your, your suggestion and your proposal. Um, I, I can't make commitments here today. I, I will discuss it with others. But I am conscious of the point that you, you have raised uh, and the importance of recognition um, of people who, who went to, uh, in my view, uh, exceptional lengths uh, to help people on an individual basis and by so doing, uh, helping the country at large get through this crisis. Ishik, Deputy Nocton. Ishik, um, thank you for uh, your response. Ishik, one way in which we can help to relieve pr pressure on our frontline workers is by eliminating trolleys uh, in our hospitals. In the last month, patients on trolleys is something that we have again started to see uh, within our hospitals across this country. We need to take action now to address the bed crisis. And that is the very minimum we owe to frontline healthcare staff across Ireland. Take, for example, Portiuncla Hospital in Banlasloe. Since the start of June, on average, there have been eight patients on trolleys every single day. 10% of the beds at the hospital have been lost as a direct result of the measures to reduce the risk of infection from COVID-19. And we need to see direct and immediate action taken to address this problem. Thishuk, would you not agree that our healthcare workers have been under enough pressure uh, for the last four months from a virus that we couldn't control? Let's not add to that. Let's take action now on something that we can control. Thank you, Deputy Nocton. Well, first of all, in terms of Port Junkland, uh, I think they've had a net reduction of about eight beds um, because, as you have said, um, the impact of COVID-19 and their desire to prevent the spread of the, the virus across the hospital uh, and, and to have sufficient isolation facilities uh, for, the, for suspected cases and indeed any particular case that they have uh, in terms of a patient um, with COVID. You're correct in saying that emergency um, presentations in our emergency departments is back more or less where it was prior to COVID. It's been steadily rising in all acute um, hospitals. And that does pose significant challenges um, over, the, over the coming months because on the one hand, we do want to resume services uh, non-COVID services in particular as best as we can. Um, but clearly, with living with COVID and COVID being an ever-present, uh, we would have to develop innovative approaches to making sure that we keep um, emergency department attendances uh, much lower than would have been acceptable in previous times. So where hospitals were at 95% uh, prior to COVID, which is too high in any event in emergency departments and in terms of overcrowding, um, the ideal situation would be back to 80% um, to facilitate any spike in numbers um, or, or surge um, in, in, in that regard. Uh, so we're very conscious of that and the HSE is developing uh, pla a plan now which should be published by the end of the month um, in relation to its strategy in terms of resuming services uh, and also um, dealing with those crunch issues in terms of, 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 of overcrowding, particularly in the emergency department.